In the spotlight this morning, as many Rhode Islanders know, the name Ernie DiGregorio is synonymous with Providence basketball and with good reason. Led by coach Dave Gavitt, the Friars of the early 70s achieved huge success. During the run, DiGregorio teamed with other Friars legends, Kevin Stakem and of course Marvin Barnes, as they captivated New England basketball fans. And now his new book, Star with a Broken Heart, is here. And in it, Ernie has chronicled so many of those memorable moments. We are thrilled that he's joining us right here on the road show this morning. Ernie D, good to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here. It was always my goal to get on the road show. Yeah. Now I'm finally here. <laughs> I love that. Well, I'm thrilled that you're here because my segments are usually in desperate need of an assist. All so right. this is perfect. I'll give you an assist. I know you will. But let's get right to it here. This um, book is, is remarkable for so many reasons, but I am a self-professed Friar fanatic. I love the team. But back when I was starting to become a fan, around the early 90s, when I was about 10 years old or so, all I ever heard from everybody was, you should have seen Ernie D and Marvin Barnes. Mm -hmm. From my mother, she inspired me to become a fan. She was a huge fan of yours. But the reason I invoke that here, Ernie, is because does it seem possible that you, all these decades later, still have that impact? I mean, it's remarkable, isn't it? They call it creativity. They call it an imagination. Uh, I was blessed with that ever since I was a little kid. When I was 12 years old, I would dribble the basketball down the street, and I'd always imagine someone try to steal it. I'd go between my legs behind my back, and I'd practice hours and hours by myself, but it'd always be imagining someone was trying to get me, and it was five, four, three, two, one. Then I'd stop and pop and hit the wooden shot. So that creativity never leaves you as a person. Right, and I uh, was watching another interview with you where you said all of those hours of practice with the ball, by the time you hit the court, you didn't have to look down. You weren't thinking about anything else because you were so locked in and prepared. Exactly. So if you bounce the ball for 10 hours a day for 15 years, you definitely don't have to look down. And I would look up the court, Marvin would get the rebound, pitch it to me, and I would throw it to Kevin Stake, and we'd be off and running. And that's what made us a special team. Absolutely captivating uh, fans uh, all around the region and beyond, of course. When you were putting this book together, did those memories just come flooding back to you? Oh yeah, you, you never leave them. You know, I can remember you know, way back when I was six years old. I mean, I have a memory like that, thank God. And uh, to create this book and, and, and do it with two of my brothers and people that I loved, you know, dearly, Coach Gavin and Marvin, was really special. And with them no longer being with us, I thought it was really important to share those stories with other people. Absolutely, and the title, Ernie, Star with a Broken Heart, Quite powerful. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, and it's it's amazing how it came to me. Uh, I, I'm the star, and, and my heart is broken because I don't have my basketball family no longer with me, and it will never be the same. But when I walk into that amp and I look up at the rafters and I see Marvin's number hanging next to mine and I see Coach Gavitt's name on the court, you know, there's a bond that can never, ever leave me. And... Uh, they'll always be with me. Your friendship uh, and relationship with Marvin was a special one, wasn't it? Yeah, ever since, you know, Marvin, Coach Gavitt asked me to pick up Marvin when I was a freshman up at Central, and he jumped in my green Corvette and we took him over to play games. Marvin and I bonded because we had the same interests, and that was to become professional basketball players and be drafted in the first round. So we were very close right until, uh, along with Coach Gavitt, right until they both passed away. Right. More, well, do you have any pictures of that green Corvette? I think we need to see that, Will. <laughs> it, it was cool. I bet it was. And you just carry the ball with you everywhere you go. Is this, does it never, it's part of you. Uh, Coach Gavitt said it was an extension of my arm, and uh, I feel comfortable with a ball in my hands. It really has been. Uh, where can we get the book, Ernie? I know it's available now. It's, if you Google the Providence College Bookstore, you have the availability right there that's the only people who carry it and you have the option of getting it personalized by me I go in there every day and sign them and the people at the Providence Bookstore have been great and you've also been doing some signings at the amp I've seen you there yeah. trying to avoid me <laughs> yeah I'm gonna do another one uh, their next game against Xavier coming up they go on the road for a couple of games and the reception has been tremendous people who have read the book really like it and rightfully so and before I let you go I've got to ask you about the iconic pass 1973 St. Louis, the final four. Yeah. We've got it right here. If you've never seen it, it's probably the most spectacular behind the back pass you've ever seen. So we're going to get this queued up, loaded up. Okay, now here we go. The break. Now watch this, Will. Here he comes. And 
Boom, behind the back to Kevin Stakem. Come on, talk to us about this. Well, the thing about Coach Gavin is he allowed me to do that every day in practice. He wasn't one of those coaches who said, hey, no behind the back pass and no fancy stuff. So it was a part of my game, and I threw those things every single day in practice. So it came first hand to me. And you had said the defender was right in front of you. That's why you went behind the back, right? Right. I couldn't throw it like this, so I had to throw it this way so he didn't get it. Kevin almost missed the shot. I know it Thankfully, <laughs> he grabbed it and laid it in. But now that clip is um, resonating with a new basketball audience all these years later. That must make you feel so good. Yeah, it gets millions and millions of hits on social media, which is really special, and uh, it makes me feel great. Well, I can't uh, even begin to thank you enough for being here. It's uh, As a Fryer fan and as someone who has loved the team forever, and just had so much respect for you. I am so happy that you were able to make time for the Roadshow to chat about the book. It's just a great pleasure to meet you. And thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm sorry I accosted you at the game last night. It was a tough Friday loss. I said to Will, I'm going to go talk to Ernie, and I bothered you in the middle no, of the you game. you never bothered. <laughs> It was my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you for A having great me. pleasure. The one and only Ernie Di Gregorio, ladies and gentlemen. If you would like to get the book, Star with a Broken Heart, it is available now. Another assist. <laughs>